Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the April 15th Board of Commissioners meeting. This evening, um, we have uh, Pastor Ronnie Cully here from Christian Home Baptist Church to lead us in an invocation of pledge. She's here. Just come up, sir. Thank you for coming again. Nice to see you again. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity to be together in your presence. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to serve you and to serve others with the wisdom and the knowledge and the inspiration and insight that you give us to make this county a greater county. We thank you, Father God, for every man and woman who serves on this board as a county commissioner. We ask you that while they serve others, Father God, and you give them wisdom and knowledge to conduct the, the business of this county, protect their families, bless them, bless everything that they set their hands to do, Father God. You promise to give them favor and good success, and we thank you for them, Father God. And may we, the constituents of this county, serve in spirit and in truth together on one accord, Father God, to make this a great county for everyone. We trust you to do it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Thank you, Pastor. All right. Um, do we have any changes or additions to the agenda this evening? We can I have a motion for approval, please? Make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none. All right, next item on the agenda this evening is public comment. I'll remind everyone that uh, it is three minutes. We have a lighted system up here. Green is go, yellow is speed up, and red is stop, please. And before I jump into that, um, I have two people that are signed up to speak for the public hearing item tonight, um, as well as at public comment. Mr. Huffnagel, did you want to speak both times or just just in one? How about Ms. Julie Hashkin? Is that correct? Yes. Did you want to speak at public comment, or were you signed up for the uh, public hearing for Bob's Wild Horse Tours? To the public portion? Of yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Oops. Okay. All right. Miss Abby Rose will be our first contestant. Good evening, my name is Abby Rose, and I'm here with Claudia Morgan and Brooke Matusko representing the Curry Tuck Agricultural Education Program. It has been almost a year since I last stood here talking with county commissioners about our greenhouse conditions. Some of you may remember, I see some new faces. Last time I was here, some of you suggested we apply for grants, contact Sun Energy, and put the project in capital outlay budget for our school system. I've been in contact with Sun Energy throughout the summer and this school year, speaking with Mr. Neil Williams. I contacted him several times and felt a little brushed off as he kept saying he needed to talk with someone over and over at Sun Energy to see if they donate $5,000. The last time we spoke, he said they'd only donate if Curry Tuck County Commissioners lifted the ban on solar energy farms. When I heard that, you have done that, I called again. This time, I was told I needed to have you lift the CUP as well. Feeling in the middle and like a political pawn, I stopped calling. Miss Dowdy, our assistant superintendent, applied for the Golden Leaf grant, which we did not receive. I do have a bit of good news. Mr. Joey Coppersmith of Sicario Builders has agreed to donate the labor for the concrete. I have talked to the Board of Education County Commissioners, Senator Steinberg, and Representative Hannig. When I was here previously, I was told the County Commissioners would assist us in making this project happen. We have put this proposed item on capital outlay to show that the Board of Education is willing to help with this project. We are here tonight asking for your support to make this project happen for our future agricultural students. Thank you. Thank you much. All right. Miss uh, Claudia Morgan. 
You guys going to speak in tandem this evening? Yes. Okay, yes. so we have Claudia Morgan and Brooke Matusko. Hello. My name is Brooke Matusko, and I'm speaking to you today on behalf of Currituck County's Agriculture Program. I have been involved in ag, more specifically horticulture, throughout my high school career. I took my first horticulture class during my sophomore year and have continued to pursue these classes. Horticulture helped me to discover my passion for plants and was a big part of me discovering my future career path. I'm going to be attending NC State University this fall to major in agroecology and sustainable food systems. While I learned many things about plant production and plant sciences throughout these classes, I feel that my education could have been much improved if more efficient resources were available. And my name is Claudia Morgan. I have been involved in agriculture classes since my freshman year of high school. I have served as um, our Curry Tug FA chapter president and the 2019. Um, Northeast, Northeast Regional President, and my first class I ever took was a horticulture class, um, and I've been involved in it ever since. And so tonight we just want to talk to you about um, our greenhouse, and I would like to bring your attention to a major hindrance to the um, efficiency of our program, our greenhouse. Um, our current greenhouse is extremely old. It was moved from J.P. Knapp to its current location when the Curry, um, the current Curry Tuck Middle was the Curry Tuck County High School. So it's rather old. Um, we've missed out on a bunch of educational opportunities with growing mums and poinsettias because we can't keep the greenhouse at a regular temperature and keep it warm enough for these plants to thrive. Um, we also want a greenhouse for our future generations of students. Um, like I said, my first class was a horticulture class and is what made me want to join FFA and really got me involved. And my little brother is in seventh grade and I want him to have those same opportunities as I had um, as a freshman in high school and for him to be able to enjoy those things like I did. Um, and there's also been for this year, an increase in the number of students, or for this upcoming school year, an increase in the number of students who want to take a horticulture class and combined with our agri-science classes who also use this um, facility, uh, we just don't have the space to accommodate that number of students. So it's a major hindrance on that. And Also, our greenhouse has a very inefficient heating system, so we can only utilize half of it through our winter months. So we'd have to put a tarp up to trap the heat on one side of it, so we end up running out of room for plants because we can only use half of the greenhouse. Um, we had two coolant systems that worked for one year, but they broke very quickly, and the systems were replaced with fans that do not ventilate the greenhouse properly. We could also cannot use our overhead watering system that was donated to us by a parent to water the greenhouse because the well water we have rusts and clogs, clogs the sprinklers, so we have to use or we have to water the greenhouse by hand with a hose, and that's very time consuming. So we feel that a water filter would help fix, fix this problem. And um, we also have to partner with other schools, most commonly Northeastern, because their greenhouses can maintain the plants that are on the plant ID list for our horticulture curriculum. Um, Northeastern has several top of the line greenhouses that maintain a much higher quali quantity and quality of plants. And also, um, Several students involved in ag classes in horticulture are high achieving students that are in the top 10% of their class. And like I said before, I am planning to go to NC State to major in agroecology and sustainable food systems. And I feel that with better resources, I and many other students would be more prepared and educated for my degree. And just to close out, I just want to remind you that agriculture is one of the main industry, industries in the United States and will always have career opportunities. In North Carolina alone, the agriculture industry contribu contributes to 70 billion of the state's economy. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, ladies. Good job. Um, you said, uh, just to have a brief question for you, Ms. Abby, you said that the uh, school board had appropriated funds. Do you know how much they appropriated this year? Mm -hmm. If you would like, I do have the, our proposal from the company that has it and all the money that would be needed for certain things. And all that. that would be if great. Like yeah, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Ben's fine. You can hand it right there on the end. Or Ms. Leanne. The county commissioner also has a copy because there were a few things that we had to change. County manager. County manager. All right. <laughs> Dan, you're moving up <laughs> or down. Depends on which way you look at it. <laughs> Ladies, thank you very much for coming out this evening. Thank you, guys.
Um, okay, that's all I have signed. Would anybody else like to comment on anything this evening? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to Commissioner's report. Uh, a couple of things. You'll notice we're a couple of commissioners like this evening. Commissioner Jarvis uh, had a vacation plan, so she is out of town and out of the country actually right now, having, having more fun than we are. Uh, and Commissioner Beaumont is out this evening as well. He had a, an engagement come up and uh, won't be here this evening. Uh, the rest of the board, we just, we just flew in from uh, the North Carolina Cooperative Extension. We had a great meeting over there and uh, learned a lot more. I know I did personally about what they do and the services they provide and uh, what a great benefit they are to this county. We're very lucky to have them. Um, several items have come up the last uh, week or so with the service districts out there. Um, for those of you that may be affected by these service districts or want more information, um, on the county website, if you go to kurtuckinfo.com, it's kurtuckinfo.com, it will put you on a landing page within the site that goes into a little bit more depth information about what's going on um, in those representative districts. And if you scroll down, for the folks in Knott's Island, you're at the bottom of the page. If you scroll down to the very bottom, there's some blue highlighted lines down there. Those are external links uh, out to more information. So. Um, if you're interested in getting more information on that, please take a moment to look those out. We also have it up for Corova uh, for the service stormwater district and Rose district up there for you guys for some more information. Uh, that's also available on that same page, kurtuckinfo.com. That is all I have for myself this evening. Commissioner Payment. Just a couple things. Um, this weekend I had an opportunity to attend the, uh, the high school's musical, which was, um, I'll tell you, it's, Come a long way since I was up there in 82, but that was phenomenal performance. I just want to give accolades to the school, the uh, the director, everybody involved with that the orchestra. It was just a phenomenal play. I went to see it twice if I had time. So just accolades to the school system for that. Um, uh, well done. And um, second is our fire departments. Make sure you remember our volunteers and our first responders out there. This week is um, – uh, for the um, telecommunicators, um, they're well appreciated, needed in our communities. They feel a lot of calls, emergencies, help uh, calm people. Um, they're going through training tonight, but I just wanted to say thank you to all the uh, the telecommunicators out there. They're a part of the first responders as well. Um, and then lastly, um, if you do want to get more uh, information on volunteer fire departments, this Friday. The Lower Currituck Volunteer Fire Department is having a fish fry. They do it every Friday before Easter on Good Friday there. But you can come in and tour the uh, facility, uh, meet some of the volunteers, and have um, a little dinner with them as well. That's all. Thank you. Mr. Rutherford? Yes, sir. Thank you. Last week I attended a Health and Human Service Conference in Durham on Medicaid transformation. Medicaid transformation will be the most significant change to North Carolina's Medicaid program in over 40 years. It will shift North Carolina's Medicaid service from a fee, a fee for service to a managed care system and will integrate physical and mental health. This complex process will impact all 100 counties. This is and will be a lot of uncertainties for Curry Tuck's DSS department but hopefully it would uh, offer an opportunity for improved health outcome for our county. Our region is expected to go out in the rollout in phase two, which will be February 2020. So hopefully phase one will get all the kinks worked out for us. Second, Commissioner Jarvis and myself would like to attend the National Association of County Officials Annual Conference in July, which will be held in Clark County, Las Vegas, Nevada. Mm. I, in the past, have attended several of these national conferences, and it provides an opportunity for information and resources to address ta challenges facing our state and county. North Carolina always has one of the largest delegations who attend the NACO meeting, and a fellow county commissioner from Person County and also a friend of mine is running for second vice president of the organization, and I certainly want to go and support his candidacy. Third, but not least, I want to thank Chairman White for the press release concerning the Moyoc Park. I know a lot of people in Moyoc have been anxious to see this completed, and thank you for the information put out. You're very welcome. 
Ready, Mr. McCord? Um, just I'd like to touch on what uh, Commissioner Payment said too, Telecommunicators Week. Um, they're the first line uh, when somebody calls in, be it a domestic, be it a fire, be it whatever it is. You know, I mean, they're, they're very crucial, and we have some phenomenal dispatchers. I work with them every day. Um, so, like I said, kudos to those guys, and that's it on me for me tonight. Right. Last but certainly not least, Mr. Estridge. Well, I've got to <coughs> reiterate what Commissioner Payment McCord said, because if I don't, I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as many of you know, my wife is one of those telecommunicators, and I tell you, I've been in there and sat and just watched and observed, and it's amazing some of the phone calls they get, how they have to deal, they have to be almost psychologists to deal with people because that's a, <clears throat> at times a very tough situation that people are calling in about. Um, attended the Chamber of Commerce, and they should be commended for an excellent spring social, and it was good to see the various businesses in the county in attendance of that. It was always a nice event. And lastly, speaking about the uh, FFA, they touched on it. Historically, the I don't reckon you still say Val of Victorian and salutatorians, the highest ranking class members in that class. Seems like they always come out of that FFA program. And that program not only is agriculture, but when you get into the leadership that they teach, public speaking, they're helping to prepare the people that's going to take our place one day. Very good. Thank you, sir. All right, that's it. Next item is uh, administrative reports. We have the YMCA of Southampton Roads for their annual update. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, County Commissioners, Mr. Manager. My name is Billy George. I'm the President and CEO of the YMCA of Southampton Roads. And again, it's a pleasure and a privilege to be here with you again this evening. I'm also proud to tell you that the state of your YMCA is strong and continues to be strong. Last year, we served uh, 7,000 different people came to your family center, which created 98,000 visits to the Y. We like to hit that 100,000 mark. We're going to blame out on snow and flooding for last year as a reason why we didn't hit that mark. That includes 1,361 active older adults who are now aging stronger. And I think one of the things we're, we're still continue to be most proud of is almost one out of two people that come to Curatuck, why come in some form of financial assistance? Right now, 45% of the memberships receives financial assistance in the total of $406,000 a year. Lastly, before I turn it over to Dean, who's our boots on the ground, uh, a program I think I'm also very proud of is 300 second graders uh, in partnership with the public schools uh, learn life-saving aquatic skills at the, at the YMCA and our All Kids Swim program. You know, accidental drowning is the second leading cause of death of youth uh, in America, and, and that, that is a fabulous opportunity to help kids learn and grow and develop. And it's not just the, the skills you learn in swimming, but it's the lifelong learning you get from the pride of being able to learn how to swim. Lastly, um, like the manager, I too will be retiring this year. <laughs> So after 44 years in the Y, this Christmas present to myself is it will be, this will be the last Christmas I'll be a Y director. And before I step aside, I have to express to this uh, county commissioners what a pleasure uh, and an honor it has been to work out of this project from start to finish. Uh, it's, it's an incredible family center. It took great vision and courage uh, to build it. Um, you know, for every four people that go to your Y, one of your citizens also goes to another Y, which I think was one of the essential geniuses because Moya can go to Great Bridge and then the Albemarle Y in the western part and the southern part, of course, going to Nags Head. Building the Y in the eastern part of the county is a little, a, a little challenging because France is a little bit away. But uh, it's been a great privilege to work with you. I hope you're proud of your Y. I hope you're proud of the work that we've done. And at this time, I'd like to ask Dean to come over and share a few more things with you. Thank you, Billy. I just want to echo uh, what Billy said. Um, you know, this past year in 2018, I fielded three calls from local communities that are looking to establish the partnership that you guys 
laid the foundation here. Um, this kind of collaboration is essential for the why work uh, in the future, and you guys really uh, laid, laid the foundation. Uh, for that, so thank you so much. I um, just want to have a just paint a picture of what happens at your YMCA. Just expound a little bit on Billy's picture with All Kids Swim. As you know, uh, every year, every kindergartner and every um, every school, public school in Curtis County, goes to the YMCA for two weeks of full swim lessons during the school day. And even Knott's Island, they come over and they come up to the pool and they take the windows that we just cleaned, super clean, and they put their little <laughs> hands on them and they peer inside the water at the pool that's, that's warm. It's a great therapy, warm water pool to teach lessons. They ask questions like, are there sharks? You know, how deep is it? For a lot of kids, this is the biggest body of water they've seen other than the sound or the ditch in their backyard. And so there's, there's lots of concern. Uh, but we take them in, we teach them the life-saving skill of swimming. They don't all learn how to swim, but they learn to reach or throw but never go. Um, they learn to how to respect the water, um, how, and they learn how to go for help if they, uh, if they get into trouble. And this past year, we had two children in our region whose lives were saved through the All Kids Swim program. So just some, some phenomenal things happening at your YMC. You should be very proud. 7,000 people, I think the population's around 26,000, 27,000 for Currituck County. That's, that's a lot of people. Um, they're probably not all from Currituck County, but that's, that's phenomenal. So you have a lot of participation in your YMCA. And not just that, the collaboration that we have with, uh, with Cooperative Extension, with Cameron, is just phenomenal. To work side by side by them, with them, uh, is just great. With Jason, Parks and Rec, Stacy with the Senior Center, Tamron with Tourism. Those are all partnerships that you lay the foundation and, uh, and have been phenomenal. And we partner on a monthly basis to deliver services to the county. And I want to close by just thanking one particular staff member that has had a tremendous impact on your YMCA and your community. Dan Scanlon, who served on the Y board from the very beginning, has been an essential pillar of your YMCA community and has, and has moved uh, to integrate the YMCA into the county service model in a, a phenomenal manner that I just have not seen before. It's been a pleasure to work with you, Dan. Uh, you're a gentleman, professional, um, and I sincerely cherish the time uh, that we spent together in, in the board meeting. So thank you so much. Any does, questions? Does he talk during your board meetings? Because we can't get him the same way. When he does, I listen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Any questions? I do have a question. I know last year I mentioned the Silver Sneakers. I think that's what it's called, Program to Humana. And you said y'all might check into it. Do you know if there's been any progress in that? Because you can, Mr. George. <laughs> yes, yes, we are working with Silver Sneakers. Uh, they're a little hard to work with. To be honest uh, but here's the challenge and uh, we are piling it in two of our centers Currituck's not one of them <laughs> I know but I apologize for that but Currituck just doesn't have the critical math silver sneakers you got to give them credit they're the smartest people in the world because they charge the person through Medicare for the fitness membership but then they pay the wife for the visit so if somebody comes once we get paid once if they come twice we get paid twice and if they come 36 times in a month we get paid for 12 max so well i'll just a nice way of saying it you... it's a horrible business deal where you can have the volume where you get more seniors coming is when it makes makes up the difference uh we haven't seen that yet in virginia beach we've only done it in two of our centers but we're doing it in the largest population areas we do it at two centers we, we merged with, but it's, it's, a tough, it's a tough partnership. It's great for the senior. It's great for, for Tivity, who runs Silver Sneakers, and it's horrible for those of us that have to pay the bills. But the larger areas have more opportunities for people to do it. In a place like Curry Tuck, we don't have any opportunities. Exactly. But... You have to have that population mass to test that we, do we get enough new revenue for the revenue we're losing. Because in most cases, for every, like those 1,300 I told you about, we're going to lose money, revenue dollars, to, that we actually need to, to provide those services. So that's the challenge with service. You have to make it up with volume. You don't have the volume. Am I explaining that correctly? 
We, we have the same problem on some other issues, like like hotels. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's, I mean, we are looking into it. We are we are piloting it at two of our family centers. But even there, a good example. We get we got just got paid in March for January. So you're providing services for an entire quarter, oh. and you're getting paid by the day. And Currituck just isn't big enough to get paid by the day. Does that make? You just don't have the visits to do that. Does that make sense? I know that's not the answer you want. That's not to the hear. answer I wanted. <laughs> Thank yeah. you anyway. Yeah, we, we would actually cut our membership revenue in half based on the if everybody was in Tivity at your Y, you had ninety eight thousand visits. We, we we would get three dollars a visit, and our membership revenue would actually go down almost one hundred fifty thousand oh. dollars. So no you're wonderful stickers. people, and we love you, but you're, you're not the economic boom of the YMCA of Southampton Roads. <laughs> I know that. I know. I, 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 don't, I don't mean to earth shatter you here today, but it's a, it's a great opportunity. It's a great partnership. That's the challenge with Tivity. Call the we're county manager into helping these seniors, mm -hmm. uh, silver <laughs> slipper people. Right. There you go. You missed your uh The your manager is probably here. sign a five-year <laughs> deal by the end of mid-June, and we can make all this work. All right. Just don't just don't call us to ask us what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Sorry. you much, gentlemen. Appreciate your time this evening. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next item is a public hearing. PB thirteen dash zero four, Bob's Wild Horse Tours LLC. Request for an amended use permit to add two additional outdoor tour vehicles to the to the following allow conditions. This property is located eight seventeen B Ocean Trail. I will be recusing myself momentarily from this for those of you that are here and have, have heard that. Um, but at, at, the, at the moment, I just want to talk to the county manager. It's been a while since we've done a special use permit and just let him rehash some of the stuff both for the board and for the, for the public at large about how these work and how they're different from a normal proceeding that we have. Thank you. I, I think you mean the county attorney? County attorney, did I say? Who did I say? Manager. Oh, no, Dan, you, you're not. I, tonight now I'm a commissioner, <laughs> the attorney, and attorney. the manager. Uh, they said I'm, I'm, you were, you know. So. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I, I just wanted to take a moment, um, as you suggested, to explain again the difference between tonight's proceeding, which is a quasi-judicial proceeding, and a legislative proceeding, which is something that you encounter uh, more commonly when you consider zoning text and zoning map amendments. Uh, a use permit refers to a situation in which a particular use is permitted uh, in a zoning district, uh, but it is only permitted uh, upon meeting certain conditions and following the issuance of the permit after a quasi-judicial proceeding, which is much like a court proceeding. Uh, pursuant to the Curta County Unified Development Ordinance, then, this board must uh, consider in the course of determining whether a use permit should be issued, whether the first of all the application is complete, whether the proposed use of the applicant's property is among those listed in the table of permitted uses, whether the conditions proposed meet or exceed uh, the minimum requirements of the Unified Development Ordinance. Uh, the board must determine that the, that the use permit will not endanger the public health or safety. The use uh, permit will not injure the value of adjoining or budding property and will be in harmony with the area in which it is located, that the use uh, that will be permitted is in conformity with the land use plan or other officially adopted plan, and finally, that the use will not exceed the county's ability to provide adequate public facilities, including but not limited to schools, law enforcement, fire, rescue, uh, and other county facilities. As a quasi-judicial proceeding, this board may only consider evidence that is presented uh, uh, under oath, so that means that anyone who intends to testify in this matter uh, should, at the beginning of the hearing, be uh, sworn uh, and take an oath to tell the truth during the course of the proceeding. Um, the board may also only consider uh, competent evidence. Competent evidence uh, is, uh, does not preclude the board uh, from considering other evidence that is admitted without objection or appears to be sufficiently trustworthy and was admitted uh, under such circumstances that it might be uh, reliable. However, competent evidence does not include testimony from lay witnesses uh, with regard to any evidence that the use of property in a particular way would affect the value of other property. The increase in vehicular traffic resulting from a proposed development would pose a danger to the public safety. Uh, or matters about which only expert testimony 
uh, would generally be admissible under rules of evidence applicable to the trial courts. Um, this matter will then uh, proceed tonight in the following way. Uh, the planning staff will first uh, present uh, a review or analysis of the case. Uh, the applicant will then present uh, their case. Uh, commissioners may then ask questions uh, of the applicant and the applicant's witnesses. Uh, any persons that are in opposition to the application may then present their case and be subject to cross-examination by the applicant. Uh, there then uh, may be uh, received by the board uh, statements from members of the public, but I would caution that this board should only consider statements from the general public that is deemed to be competent evidence. That, that is evidence that might be admissible in court. It must relate specifically uh, to the matter before the board tonight. It must relate to the UDO requirements, and it may not be, if it's from a lay witness, related to any one of the other conditions I listed a few moments ago, such as uh, traffic, uh, public safety, uh, and um, uh, value of adjoining property issues. Following uh, the presentation of evidence, uh, th then the board uh, should close the evidentiary phase of the hearing, uh, deliberate, and then render your decision uh, on the use permit with any conditions that are reasonably related to the use of the property. Uh, with that, then, I would suggest that the board entertain a motion to recuse uh, Chairman White from consideration of the matter, since this, of course, is his application, and pursuant to statute, it would be an improper conflict uh, for him to sit and participate in consideration of his own application in a quasi-judicial matter. I'd like to go ahead and make a motion that we accuse uh, Chairman uh, White um, from this uh, matter since he would uh, be a conflict of interest with him. I'll second that motion. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right. Mm -hmm. Down here, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> And as uh, at this time, I'll go ahead and um, run this portion of the meeting. Um, at uh, anyone who's going to testify or speak um, on behalf of this matter, please come up and get sworn in. Um, I'll just announce Dr. Greg Wills. I'm a uh, licensed attorney here in uh, Currituck County, and I'm here to represent Mr. White. But I won't be testifying. I'll just be assisting him with his application process. I don't think it's necessary for uh, Mr. Wills to be sworn again as he is an attorney. He's advocating on behalf of his client, but he is not testifying, nor what he says should be considered uh, evidence during the course of the hearing. Do you swear to tell the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Okay, thank you. Um, is there, um, before we get started, is there any commissioners um, up here that need to speak on behalf if they received any information regarding this or phone calls or anything they want to? Yes, sir. I think several emails have been sent, and I did read the one from Mrs. Cumming, uh, and I think Dan or Leanne responded to it, but it will not affect my decision making. Same thing. I received multiple phone calls, and same thing. It won't affect my decision. Okay, and, and I saw the emails, but I never opened them up and looked or, or looked at them, but I saw them come through. And, Mr. Chairman, if I may say, I, I should, probably should note that, that what's the importance of not considering telephone calls or emails or letters uh, that you may have received relative to this application or any quasi-judicial matter uh, is that that would be deemed hearsay evidence, that uh, there is not the ability for uh, the applicant or other persons to be able to examine or cross-examine the, the individual or person who made the statement and thus it would not be deemed admissible and therefore you properly uh, did not and should not consider uh, receipt of such information okay with that I'll go ahead and let staff go ahead and present the matter thank you mr. vice chairman um, Mr. McCree's uh, presentation may be longer than mine this, after this evening. Um, the applicant is requesting an amendment to an existing use permit. The property is located in uh, Monterey Plaza Shopping Center. Um, it is um, zoned, uh, it is a, has a PD, a PUD overlay with a GB allocation. 
There's an existing use permit that allows three tour vehicles, um, and the business does operate three tour vehicles. Um, so the request is to operate five tour vehicles. Um, outdoor tour operators have a interesting uh, way that we regulate them through the Unified Development Ordinance, but also through the Code of Ordinances. Um, our Code of Ordinances requires that um, to qualify for an operator license, you must have a use permit. Um, the Code of Ordinances sets the limit for the number of vehicles on five or the number that approved through the use permit. Um, and the original use permit was approved at three. So now the applicant is requesting to increase from the original three to five. Um, and so at the site, at the Monterey Plaza Shopping Center, uh, there is ample parking uh, at the center site to accommodate these additional vehicles and the additional customers that these two vehicles um, could uh, generate. There is about, I think, 100 open spaces that um, haven't been designated through other uses. So um, since this is an existing use permit, um, the TRC uh, committee recommends adoption of the use permit with the uh, following conditions on, the, on this use permit. That the outdoor tour operator license is required per Chapter 8, Article 4 of the Curry Tuck County Code of Ordinances. The outdoor tour operations shall comply with all the standards of Chapter 8, Article 4 of the Curry Tuck County Code of Ordinances that the, a maximum of five 15 passenger vehicles may be operated for outdoor tours at any given time and tour vehicle tour vehicles shall be labeled with decals or paint markings that clearly display the company name in accordance with the license requirements of chapter 8 article 4 of the code of ordinances mr mccree uh, spoke to the uh, use permit review standards that we should use uh, in deliberating over a use permit and typically those are broken down to staff has two of those and the applicant would is responsible for supplying the answers for two of those um, i'll go over the staff's required findings uh, or the, what the staff typically supplies the findings for and is that the use is in conformity with the land use plan or other officially adopted plans and staff preliminary findings that it, the 2006 land use plan classifies this site as full service within the corolla sub area uh, the proposed use is in keeping with the policies of the plan, and some of those policies are policy ED1, new and expanding industries and businesses should especially be encouraged that diversify the local economy and train and utilize a more highly skilled labor force and are compatible with environmental quality and natural amenity-based economy of Curry Tuck County. Policy OB2, so as to minimize commercial strip development and maximize traffic moving through Moving capability of NC-12, Curry Tuck County shall encourage commercial development to cluster at appropriate locations rather than dispersing along NC-12. And policy HP-3, development of the tourism and educational potential of the area's architectural, historic, and cultural resources shall be encouraged. Um, the other finding that staff typically uh, provides uh, input on is the fact that the use will not exceed the county's ability to provide adequate public facilities, including but not limited to schools, fire and rescue, law enforcement, and other county facilities. Um, and the proposed use will have no impact on schools, and Curry Tuck County has adequate public facilities to serve this use in existing Monterey Plaza Shopping Center. And so staff recommends approval of this use permit, and I'll be glad to answer any questions that the board may have. I have a question. So you're saying the use permit standard would be five vehicles, right? The code of ordinance says you can have up to five for uh, reasons that I'm not completely sure of. The original use permit was approved at three. Um, so you have the ability to approve up to five vehicles for this use permit. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the board? Is it true the Corolla uh, Wild Horse Fund has discontinued their tours? Um, I'm not very sure about that. I've, I've heard they anticipate doing that, but they have not um, 
come to me to let me know that they are not continuing their their horse tours. I was told that last fall. I think I'm right on that. So I'm under oath, and I tell you that I'm, I just don't know. They were operating three vehicles, is that correct? Do you know? I do not know. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the board? All right, thank you, Ms. LeCicero. I'll go ahead and ask the applicant to uh, come forward and present. Right. Good evening, Commissioners. Feels a little weird sitting on the side of the aisle this evening. Uh, Commissioner Etheridge, to answer your question, I sit on the Wild Horse Funds uh, Advisory Board. Um, we decided over this past winter to they're not going to stop doing tours, but they're going to give them for very high-end donors, like over $5,000. So the scope of their tours would be very limited to probably less than a couple of months, and they're probably hopeful to get that at that price tag. So that is their, uh, they've changed their mission and how they're doing things. So they won't be giving up their tour license per se, but they're completely changing the way that they do business. Um, and, uh, but yeah, I think you had another question from Ms. LeCicero that they I have. They were operating three vehicles in the past, were they not? I believe it's two. two. They had two Suburbans originally, and they came in and got a permit for a 15-passenger. So they augmented the capacity. And to answer uh, commissioner, other Commissioner Etheridge, Ms. Kitty Etheridge, um, the original parking uh, was a problem and when I came in to do this permit. So there's only three vehicles there. Uh, part of the reason was the parking was an issue. The county has since changed how they do their parking formulation and it now allows me to do this um, at this property, which will be another item which will kind of confuse things this, is, this evening, but uh, my plan is to shut one of my businesses down, and this is a process in doing that. So while I'll be adding more to Bob's Wild Horse Tours this evening, I'll be coming back before the board to amend another special use permit for Back Beach Wild Horse Tours. So the overall net effect of what I'm asking for the board tonight will reduce my vehicle count from eight to seven um, pretty quickly. Uh, the other offices actually already are closed, anticipating a favorable outcome this evening. If that's the case, we will not be reopening that office. I've actually killed off most of the advertising for that business at this time. Um, just want to hit a few facts for you this evening. Um, they're pretty simple. Obviously, the staff has approved this application. We will not endanger <coughs> um, public health. We don't use any hard, harsh chemicals or anything to that effect or anything else that would endanger public health or safety. Um, we have 20 to 30,000 customers a year that come through my doors. Those customers, um, in large part, are not from Currituck County. They're actually from the surrounding counties. Um, so when it comes to talking about property values, I don't know if it'll affect property values or not. I'm not an expert, but I do know that it affects the economy in Currituck County. I'm a major anchor for any shopping center I'm in. And the businesses stand to profit from my having increased sales there because those patrons will then go out and shop, eat at restaurants, buy things in our, in our various stores that are there, thereby increasing our tax base. Um, this business is in conformity with several areas of the land use plan, as Ms. LeCicero pointed out, but there's other areas, goal number, uh, goal number five, policy ED1 and policy ED4 for economic development. Um, the current licenses uh, allow for up to five vehicles, so I'm not asking for anything that's out of the ordinary. And as I've said, the, the, net, the, the net effect and the intent for me is to reduce the number of vehicles and work smarter, not harder. Um, some other facts is that um, this industry is an integral part of a diverse source economy. Like I said, we draw um, from a broad area as far as Williamsburg, Virginia, down to Ocracoke. People will plan day trips to Corolla from Williamsburg, come down and see the horses, go to the lighthouse and do other things. We also provide a valuable concierge service while people are down here. They want to know where did the locals go eat? What is there to do for my family while I'm on vacation? So we can showcase and highlight those other things while they're here. Um, and about 70% of my business actually is not from Corolla. If you think about it geographically, it's a very small area, so we don't we have the population base here during the summer to, to fill all the vehicles for all the various tour companies that are here, so we pull from a much larger area. And uh, I think that about covers it. Um, we do uh, 
provide decent incomes. I have as many as 15 people just at this one company alone. Um, many of them are retirees and help supplement their retirement income. Quite a few of them make enough working off of me just from tips during the summer that they don't have to have another job through the winter. So we've had people that have been there for over a decade now working for me. I think that's it from my side of it, and I'll be happy to answer any questions from the board. Mr. White, um, question again. Originally, the reason you only went with three originally, you, you stated, was because of the parking there was some parking issues for your business at that time? Yeah, the, the way that um, the county looked at parking, not only for my business, how many, how many vehicles per whatever number of patrons come in, but also looking at restaurants, how, they, how many cars there are per table. And the whole, the whole formula was part of the problem um, with why I don't have more vehicles there. And then at the same time this went on, um, I had my Jeep rental business there. And that was when all of the, well, the licensing came into effect. And I went from, I actually had 15 vehicles at one point in time. And I went down from 15 to 8. So I kind of spread those out. I was tied into leases at other places, long-term 10-year leases I couldn't get out of. So uh, I do have a lease that's expiring next year at Back Beach Wild Horse Stores. I let the owners know I'm not going to be renewing that lease at this time. Again, um, for if I have a favorable outcome this evening. So it just affected how I staged the vehicles, and then parking was an issue at that time. Okay. Mr. White, so if I understand you correctly, because I think a lot of the concern has been people thinking you're going to put more vehicles on the beach. Right. But you'll be putting less, less. vehicles. One less. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Anything further? Have we got any questions for the applicant board? Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, I guess at this time I'll go ahead and um, um, bring before the individuals um, that signed up um, opposing this that have been sworn in. Um, the first one I had on here is uh, let's see, uh, Mr. Huffenagel. I hope I got that right. You did. Okay. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, I think Bob pretty much answered the questions and the concern that we have down on the beach with horse tours. Of course, you all heard about how many people hate horse tours, and every time you bring it up, they want to oppose anything going on with a horse tour, particularly adding tours. So most of the concern and the people I've been able to speak with, I guess, could ask the same question which Bob just answered. And I guess my question would be first, it would have been a lot better and smoother had the other business closed and then come back in and ask for a use permit to add two. I think I understand why he might have done that. But if somebody else goes into that location where he's at and gets a lease for five horse tour vehicles, then there's not a reduction. Somebody's going to take that business over. We don't know if that's going to be transferred to somebody that might just sell it to him as a horse tour business LLC, and they keep the five, and he gets to add two to it, so the horse tour community grows. So I guess my question would be, could there be something added to the use program, use permit that he's asking for, that is contingent on him getting out of the current lease that he wants to get out of? If that's unreasonable. And, and we'll let them come back and, and answer that here in a, in a minute. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, the next individual I had was uh, Don Humpdagle. That was me. Oh. Was oh, the, I'm sorry. Well, then Fran, I'm sorry. Oh, she's sorry. Uh, yeah, you, okay. She be sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, the next uh, person is Martha Chester. Uh, good evening. Um, I'm Martha Chedester. I'm a full-time resident in um, the four-wheel drive area in Swan Beach. And um, we just wanted to ensure that the horse tours aren't increasing because um, we believe there, there is an impact to the environment 
and um, and to property values. Um, well, Miss, to keep in mind, this is a quad judicial hearsay and so speculate. I, mean, I understand, okay. but this is but my we have opinion. to yeah, we have to have expert witnesses okay. to to state those facts. You know, just not if you, you get what I'm saying. Okay. Um, I mean, yeah. Well, just that he, uh, uh, Commissioner, no, yeah, Commissioner White had said that he didn't believe there was an impact, and I'm just saying I believe there is. Okay. Um, in answer to that, um, so um, I guess um, I have a lot of hearsay. <laughs> so, um, but there are. Uh, many people in the community who are concerned that the horse tours will increase, and um, we just want to make sure that um, there are more um, more regulations um, and um, like that. Okay. And, and again, no, I appreciate that, but. You, but just so you understand, we have to, I know when you say a lot of other people, again, that's, they're okay. not here to testify on their behalf. So it's, right. you know, so we will, we appreciate what you have to say and what you're, you know, what you're telling us and we'll, we will listen to what you're telling us. Okay. But bringing information from other people that aren't here, we really can't take that into consideration. Okay. Um, but no, but I appreciate that. Um, okay. Anything else or? But, uh, nope. Can we ask her a question? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead. <coughs> How do you think it impacts negatively impacts property values? Um, what our, do you base it on? I um, base it on the fact that in Swan Beach, in particular, the roads have deteriorated so poorly um, since the horse tours have been there, and um, I. This is hearsay, I guess, I guess, again, but I know of several people who have left and sold their property because they were not happy with the horse tours. Do you know, did they sell below market value or? I do not know. <coughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess I'll have to um, um, revert back if anybody had a question for Mr. Hoffnagel. I forgot to ask the board if they had any questions for him. Okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Thank uh, you. Chester. Uh, the next person I had was Julia Hash Hashkin. 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 Okay. Thank you. Okay. So my name is Julie Hashkin, and I am a property owner in the Four Wheel Drive area, primarily in Seagull, um, the Seagull Beach area. And one of the reasons I came to actually live in Chesapeake, I'm a Virginia resident, but I own property in North Carolina. And one of the reasons why I decided to come tonight, it's not directed just at Mr. White, it's just that I feel like the notification for residents for these types of things is just not wide. I found out about this hearing from a Facebook post, a social media post. So I probably would have more comments and have had more time to research if I knew that this hearing was coming up, the permit was coming up to be approved, the increase in vehicles would have had a little bit more time. I just ask that you consider other ways that residents are notified of these types of things, especially when I feel like it's very impacting to our property. I'm not going to speak about property value. I understand it's all hearsay. However, I have been on my deck at 9 o'clock on a Saturday when three horse tour trucks roll up in my driveway. And it's not pleasant. It's, it's not, I'm there for peaceful enjoyment of my property. I don't get that peaceful enjoyment because we have three horse tour trucks in our driveway where it says do not enter, private driveway. They're still coming in our driveway. And I understand it's not just Mr. White's company. There are other horse tour companies down there. I understand that. But I'm just trying to make sure, and I know there aren't a lot of other residents here, that it's seen as that. It's a little bit of an invasion of privacy. Now, I know on the flip side that there are some great things that some of the drivers do. They educate people. They explain about the wild horses. They talk about the environment. But there has to be a balance. Sometimes I feel like there isn't a balance. I mean, you can just see the trucks rolling down the beach. And I don't know how anyone seeing that number of trucks on the beach can say that there's not any erosion, deterioration of the roads. I don't know how it's possible that anyone down there could say that's not happening. It's 100% happening. So I would just ask 
if not for this permit, even though I, I, I'm opposing it now because I don't feel like I've had the opportunity to explore ever. I went on the agenda. I looked at all the documents. I opened them up. I print them. I have them all here. I do not see where residents were notified or asked for their input until this meeting unless I'm missing something, and I apologize if I am. So I just ask that you think about some of the questions that were posed, like the roads, like the, you know, like the privacy. Um, I personally feel like there's a conflict of interest, and I know he, Mr. White's recused himself at this hearing, but I still feel like there might be a little bit of a conflict of interest, but respect all of the members of the board. And I mean, in closing, I would just like to s just really please consider either delaying the meeting for a month so more folks have an opportunity to respond or the decision for a month or for future things really consider it doesn't just impact the shopping center that the five trucks are parked at it impacts the area in which the business is actually operating and that's all i have unless you have any questions any questions on the board uh, mr Curry, could could you just elaborate again how the advertisement um, goes out just so i mean I mean, we do do the advertising and due diligence for that. Yeah, certainly. If states, <coughs> the statute in the Unified Development Ordinance requires for there to be public notice uh, of this public hearing. Uh, Ms. LaCicero may be better able oh, to okay. more specifically okay. state uh, how that was advertised in this particular instance. Uh, the, the property itself, um, is, a sign is placed on it. Uh, neighbors within 200 feet are notified of this hearing. Um, and also an ad runs, a legal ad runs for two weeks, not more than 10, not more than 25 and no less than 10 days um, is run, uh, an advertisement in the local paper. Um, Chairman White also held a community meeting in, I think those notes were in your uh, packet, um, and no one attended that community meeting where he notified neighbors within uh, 200 200 feet of the property. Now this is a unique situation because the use permit is for the, the property there at Monterey Plaza, mm -hmm. um, but it is for operating uh, an outdoor, operating an outdoor tour in the off-road area. So that's, that's where a little bit of disconnect is. Okay. But it, we followed our UDO and statutory requirements as far as advertising and public notification. Okay, thank you. Just to make one thing clear, the time for advertising and the distance is prescribed by state law, but we actually exceed the uh, distance the state has in the statute, correct? Yes, we've, uh, as their UDO stands now, we do go above and beyond what uh, state statute is. And with the recent amendment that becomes effective July 1st, we're going to increase that notification area as well. Thank you. So my only comment to that is we're not doing wild horse tours at the Harris Teeter Shopping Center. We're doing them in the four-wheel drive area. So 200 feet doesn't cut it from the Monterey Shopping Center. That, that, I mean, that's, that's it. That's my only comment. Thank okay. you. Um, thank you. <coughs> All right, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll bring the applicant back up to address some of the questions. One, one second. Hold, hold on one second. Yes, sir. You can come back up. Come back up. Okay. Okay, I think certain situations require different expectations. Uh, there's a lot of people live down there on the beach. Very few would have been notified if I didn't have a Facebook page and put it out there so people would know. I'm, I'm sorry to say, but I think if we're implementing a use permit wherever, let's say, but it only really affects the beach, there needs to be some sort of standard that's developed to be fair to the community of that area to where they see notification. If there's 84 members living in Corova, 84 households, and 10 of them work, and the other 74 do not go out to the hard road except once a week, once a month, that notification they never get. So I really don't see why in an area that's as isolated as Corova and Swan, that for a public hearing, we can't get a mailing. And that would be something that would help everybody, to be quite honest with you. It would really help everybody get things accomplished. We've, 
I think I've talked about this before. We feel like we're in the dark a lot. We're not heard. We don't get our voices. I, it, I'm not one that's against the horse tours. I'm only, I want people to feel comfortable that what the commissioners and the county is doing is on the up and up. And I think, like I said to Bob and I asked him, I would prefer that he have an amendment or something that is used to get rid of his other business first and then apply for the use permit. And he wouldn't have, I don't think he'd have anybody concerned about it. We're concerned about somebody moving into that business, taking it over, having five vehicles, and he got two in his other one, and we didn't lose anything, we didn't reduce them. So if he can answer to those questions, it would be really appreciated. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mr. White? So to answer those, um, from, a, from a business standpoint, this is a public hearing. There's no guarantee that I would receive a use permit this evening. For me to come in and amend my use permit, which is what I would have to do, um, I, if I get this wrong, um, a use permit is tied to a property forever. So I have to come in, apply for a use permit change, and in the case of uh, the other location, I have to get permission from the owner of the property to change that permit. But it doesn't behoove me to do that until I've secured the permit that's before the board this evening. Once I've done that, I'll come back in. We'll talk about changing that use permit. The other part of the equation that Mr. Huffnagel is missing is uh, um, licensing. I actually hold the license. Back Beach Water Horse Tours does. So another company can't just come in and utilize the use permit that's on the property currently. They have to have that license. So the only company that's going to come in there and utilize that use permit would be one that's moving from another location into the Corral Lake Town Center where Back Beach Horse Tours is located. As I've stated under oath tonight, I will be coming forward to the board to change that use permit or working with the board going forward to actually affect how the licenses work and merging those, those, the processes together. It's a little redundant between the licensing and the use permit that we currently have. And I've been talking with Jenny Turner about this and changing some stuff to present to the board, but that's for another day. Um, and to answer another question that came up this evening about notifications, um, I have worked hard to actually change the notification process, as, as, as Ms. LaCicero just stated. We actually changed it from 200 to 500 feet, and I know that doesn't help you out in Corova, but if you can imagine, there's 3,000 property owners up there. I would have to sit down and write 3,000 letters and mail 3,000 envelopes to 3,000 property owners. That's a little bit excessive for any business to do. Now, we have been working as a board, and I've been working with county staff to help improve our notification process and to get public information out there. Just like the website I mentioned this evening with uh, KurtTuckInfo.com, just to get more information out there and changing some of the other stuff we've done. So we are working on that. We all, I am very aware, as I sat where you're sitting for many years watching these meetings, and, and trying to educate people or get the information out to them so that they can make informed decisions or show up to these things um, like you have this evening. Um, I, don't, I can't think of anything else that I've missed this evening. Did you, did you have any follow-up for me? Oh, oh, oh I did, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Um, we pay in. Um, the, the, you know, it's been mentioned that we have a deleterious effect on the roads. We are the most regulated industry in this county. We're the only ones that are on the first page of the county website if you want to make a complaint. We're the only ones that pay $950 per vehicle to be in business. No one else does that other than whatever license you may need to put pesticides down for, in, in your case, um, or a farmer. And uh, so a good chunk of the money that comes in from the wild horse tours goes towards the roads in Corova, as we have a service district there. It does not go to Swan Beach because they chose not to be part of that service district. It does not go to North Swan Beach because they chose not to be part of that service district. If they want to get in on the action, they can. I personally have spent a lot of money to improve my road, Albatross, to my house. I, I have paid $1,500 to Mark Thompson to fix that road. Every single person that lives on that road benefited from it. He only got a couple hundred bucks from the other residents. Now, I'm in a position to be able to do that, and that's nice, but it is my home and my road. And it's, you know, it's one little road. So um, just keep that in mind. We, we are heavily regulated. If we get two, if two of my drivers get a ticket in a 30-day period, I have to shut my business down for three days. I mean, we have a, a, a boot on our neck every day out there. And um, I'm proud to say that my company 
is we've had very little instances of problems. We've had a few drivers that got speeding tickets. But throughout the years, we've maintained a very professional staff. And um, I think we're pretty highly regarded pretty much across the board as running a, a very good business. So did you have something? No, no, no. Did anybody got any questions again for – uh, I'd like to a comment okay. regarding his horse tours. Obviously, I work at the Sheriff's Department. I'm a patrol sergeant on the mainland, so I don't work in Corolla. But um, there's times when I do receive complaints or whatever. And in Bob's defense, and I did some uh, research on it over the weekend, it doesn't matter which horse tour it is. They always say it's his, and it's not his. He was When I looked up on the complaints, which is public record, somebody can request that from the thing, they had the lease. So I took time out of my time, not getting paid by the county, to look up to see they have the least complaints in his defense. Um, you know, and, and far as, like you said, when somebody made the comment about the, you know, if 15 people are in one of those trucks, the surveys that we had from the county that we just recently done, they did, um, I mean, they, they raved. I mean, like some people don't have four-wheel drives. They can't afford a four-wheel drive vehicle. But if 15 people are riding in one of those trucks and they can afford a four-wheel drive vehicle, you could have eight vehicles on the, on the roads, on the beach, compared to one. Now, I know those are a lot bigger and more commercial, but I just wanted to state that <laughs> mainly was the, the, the complaints that my research from looking over the last few years, he was the least complained on. So, but every company, they always said he owned it, and even it wasn't his. So, but, you know, in his defense, he was getting the... Um, and far as like the notification, I received a lot of phone calls on that. When I told people his goal was to, like he said earlier, work smarter, not harder, to have one less vehicle, uh, I got a lot less complaints about that. It made people feel more comfortable. Any other questions for Mr. White? I have White? a question, Mr. White. Ma'am. Could you explain a little bit more? I know people might be like I am. Say if your business, you're going to move and have the five tours going out of one place mm -hmm. where your other one has three could i go in and open a wild horse tour there no so the license regulates that that right. is a key part of it the so there's special use permits all over the place when i originally operated out of the ennick crawl light there's still a special use permit for that place i believe it's actually been amended to get rid of the tours because they need more parking for jet skis but for instance it stayed there for quite some time after i left and um, there's another one up the street, um, the, one of my other business. When I leave that, if I leave that location, that will be there, you know, until the landowner comes in and asks that it be removed from his property. So those things stick around, but it's the licenses that really limited what we do. And um, it's one area that it, the, when, when we went through all of this, um, it kind of it messed up. The, the original intent was to limit the, the tour companies to where they were at that, at that point in time. I believe you were commissioner at that time, Mr. Etheridge. And so, you know, I had 10, I had about, I had, oh, I, was just, I had, I think 14 or 15 vehicles at the time, including my Jeeps. But um, I actually downscaled from that, obviously. I only have eight currently at the, at the current time, and I'm looking to get on a seven. So the intent was to cap the tours at where the companies were at, to not cause them any greater f uh, financial harm, really and allow them to do what they've always done, but also not allow for expansion. Well, the problem was the way the license was written, it actually allows for expansion. So, for instance, I've, I've talked to the board about this before. There's two licenses out there that are owned by uh, Don Cheek and Hattie McTwitty. They are no longer operating, and each of those licenses only had one vehicle on a special use permit. If someone were to come in and buy those licenses from those individuals and then come into a shopping center and apply for a special use permit and have it grounded, they could go up to five vehicles because of the way that the, the language is and the license. So the way it's written, we could have up to 50 vehicles out running around doing wild horse tours if every single license had five vehicles in them because there's 10 of them out there. So, um, you know, that's something we need to look at as a board and decide if that's what we want to do. Um, right now, I think we're at about 32 vehicles, something like that, 36. So we're well shy of that 50 mark. And um, I think most of the owners, like myself, recognize that we have a responsibility to run our businesses um, responsibly and, and are okay with where we're at financially. So. Well, I don't think the citizens are worried about it being run. Well, they're worried about it being run responsibly, but I think they're concerned about an increase in right. more. And I, and, and I am decreasing. Right. 
that that is that is the thing to take away from this is that I'm actually actually I'm increasing this location, but I will be decreasing my business, and I will be coming back before the board to change the other license special use permit pending an outcome of this uh, agenda item this evening. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. White is correct. That was the original intent of the ordinance to cap the number of vehicles that were going up there. And it wasn't an easy process to do it either. It took a while a and meetings. a lot of cooperative effort between the, the tour operators and private citizens and the county. It was definitely a joint effort across the board. Anything further for me? Yeah. Well, <laughs> hold on one second. You, you have yeah. a, we have a guest yeah, that came yes, in late. I was, that she needs to get sworn in, but she I was going like to. Yeah, I saw her raise her hand. I was going to get to her in a minute. So thank you. Um, any other questions for Mr. White at this time? Okay, thank you, Mr. Who regulates the tour that comes out of Virginia Beach? Mm, well, they can get into trouble, run afoul of us, I guess. The Ike would probably be better and want to answer that. And we've had that happen. Um, we had Jay Bender had one that he was working with the park service and bringing people down through. But he was picking up with one of his trucks. He was actually operating under his license, but uh, the money was taken in Virginia. It was a weird thing. And I think we, he just stopped doing it. But, but, but if someone is, is deemed to be operating an outdoor, is operating as an outdoor tour operator, as that is defined in the, or, in, in the code of ordinances, uh, then they could be cited uh, because they would need to be licensed and all the licenses have already, are already committed at this point. And don't we as a county sit down with all the wild horse tour operators and go over the rules and regulations with them? We did. Um, we didn't do it this year, uh, but for, I believe, ten, nine or ten years, we had an annual meeting and got together. Uh, we didn't do it this past year. Um, and part of what came out of that collaboration, as uh, Owen was talking about earlier, was adding signage on the vehicles, putting numbers on the vehicles. We even talked about licensing the vehicles, and we actually came before the board, before I sat on the board, to look at licensing individual operators, the drivers themselves, and that never went anywhere, but um, as, a, as a further step. So we involved the county in actually training them. So there's a training video that each of the drivers is required to watch every year. And so that's part of our license that they have to go in and do that. And the county gets notified by email when the drivers have done that and uh, sends them a little email out saying thank you for completing your training. Um, this year we've actually entered into a better collaborative effort with the Wild Horse Fund as well to have them educate the tour companies better on what their mission is and what they do and because there's been some tension there, as you know. Um, that's not really part of the licensing process, but um, we, we as an industry and bringing the public in have been intimately involved between the county and, and residents in Crova. None of those people that are here tonight were part of those talks because these went on some time ago initially. But, um, but what came out of that is what you have before you now with the licensing and, and the reduction of vehicles and, and all the stipulations that we have on us. And we as a county, I can't remember the lady's name, but if I'm sitting on my porch and they're coming up my private road, we as a county should be able to do something about that with the tour operators. Yeah, we get calls from the Sheriff's yeah. Department when that happens. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's, I won't say there's, there, that everybody is a responsible owner, Certainly not, um, you know, and some of some of our drivers I've had problems with and I've let them go. I've, I've had I had the wild horse fund call me and tell me some guy was doing something. I just let him go. I was not going to have it. And, um, you know, I have to live in, in Swan Beach and 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 see the stuff that they do, too. So it, it is a part of my world, too. OK, thank you, Mr. White. Thank you. Right. Mr. Alfred, I'll get to you one second. Mr. I, I skipped over um, Gregor Wills. You were signed up to speak. Did you want to speak? You're good? Okay. Oh, okay, you were on the list. I want to make sure I cover you. Uh, I'm going to bring this, this lady up next. Um, you wanted to speak. I need to get you sworn in. Okay, so if you please get up. And, and, oops. This, there's a Bible up there. If you could put your hand on the Bible and raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, whole truth, not about the truth? So help me God. So help me God. Okay, thank you. Could you state your name and address for the record, please? It's Mary Christine Zadario. I live at 127 Caratuck Drive in Caratuck, North Carolina. And I 
I operate Eden Day Spawn Salon in Currituck and in Kerala. Okay. I'm in the Monterey Plaza Shopping Center. I am within distance of being notified, but I didn't, the only thing I saw was a little sign that said public hearing, yellow sign that said public hearing. I actually heard about it from somebody that I work with. Um, I have no problem with anybody in business. I, bet, I think that people in business work hard for what they, and, and I'm, my only concern is parking because I know what that can be like there because I've been in business there for 17 years. Even though they've re-verbed the parking, they've not redone anything about the parking. It's still the same parking. They haven't expanded it in any way. And recently I've seen a lot of the vehicles out there that are, they don't just say Bob's Wild Horse Tours on them. They, they have many other names of different horse tours. And there's been, um, there was a bit of a parking issue just recently, and that's, it's not season yet. But as far as adding two, um, I mean, I don't have a problem with that, but I'm wondering how will that be policed? I mean, if the vehicles are numbered and that they can actually have a flow about them that isn't going to you know, cause a lot of congestion, I think everybody would feel really good about that. If there was a system so that we could actually not bring in extra vehicles and extra horse tours and just run them through there, I mean, how is that going to be monitored and policed? Is my question. Okay. Um, I don't know if I'll let the applicant come back up and answer that then, if you'd like. <coughs> so that's uh, that's fairly simply answered. Um, yes, there's more vehicles there now, Larry, um, because I've closed the other office. I have a big closed sign on the window right now, so I started bringing the cars down to Bob's doors, um, and they're just they're just hanging out basically, but. Each tour operator gets a license plate to put on the front of a tour vehicle. And the Sheriff's Department will ding us if we're out there and we don't have that license plate on the front of it. And it is actually a traditional license plate size. Um, they're color-coded to, um, to the companies. And, for instance, mine are blue. And if I don't have a plate on there, then I run the risk of getting a ticket and having my business shut down. So it behooves the... The operator to run the, the, an appropriate business and in fact it does work because that happened last year um, Mr. Meredith came before this Board of Commissioners and was operating without a license on his vehicle and he got shut down for three days so um, the county does allow us to have overflow vehicles because things break down and we can move the, the license was the easiest way the license plate was the easiest way to move from one vehicle to the next it breaks down I go hop in another truck run up the beach put the guests on this on the truck and wait for the tow truck to take the other one off if that's the case and just move the license plate over. The parking um, is tight around our building just because we have a wedge-shaped lot. So my vehicles are actually out towards the front. The rear of the building is taken up with employee parking and it is always full back there because there's several businesses that they park their employees in the rear just as you would to leave the front parking open for the customers. During the summertime we have a um, a pull-out lane, a uh, pull-off lane, there's a fire lane slash unload loading zone. We actually park in the loading zone as we're pulling people in and out to help keep our trucks out of the parking lot. So the only time I've ever seen that parking lot completely full is on a rainy day. And guess what I'm not doing on a rainy day? I'm not running wild horse tours. So, um, yes, there's days when the parking lot is completely full. Saturday, we run a limited operation because it's check-in day. Nobody goes on horse tours for the most part. Sundays are very light as well because it's a check-in day. And then the rainy days, we're not operating because it's raining out and we have open-air trucks. People just don't want to do it. I'll say most of them don't want to do it. There's a few people that are, that are brave enough to get a poncho and go do it. But um, So we don't really affect parking in that way. Uh, it's just kind of an adverse effect of how we operate that it's opposite. So on days when the parking lot's quite full, we're not doing anything. I'll send staff home, and I might just have one person there answering the phone. Uh, Mr. White, I guess just one question just came up. But since you've been at that location, have other businesses ever come to you and complained about the parking or had any concerns with it? No, most of them ask me when I'm going to open. <laughs> okay. So they want to know, uh, including some of her staff, uh, will come in, especially when I have a beer store there. And we've shut that down. So one, one aspect of this is I had a beer store in there, my craft beer store, and 
you know, I guess some of our customers came down to the beer store and bought stuff. So um, we have closed that down, and that has also changed the parking formulation. Now, we don't have that business operating anymore, so um, we don't need parking for that business anymore. And they were operated out of the same unit. Any questions? From Can I just comment on the policing question? In the right. summertime, there's possibly, <coughs> probably on the low side, five to six, um, you know, deputies. And on the high side, you know, eight or nine, mm -hmm. you know, as far as police in that, that area. They're out there. And like I said, we've got a bullseye on us. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Hoffman, you said you want to come up. Okay. <coughs> I guess the this one question would be for the attorney and then secondly to him. Uh, licensing for the horse stores, my question would be, can that licensing be sold to somebody else? Would the board like me to answer that question? Yes, go ahead. <laughs> uh, no, licenses may not be sold. Um, there is a provision in the Code of Ordinances that does not permit uh, a license to be a commodity, in essence, and to be sold to another party. Okay. That's, I think that clears a lot of things up that I think most people were worried about. With, with the, uh, There's been a lot of talk about tours and everything i don't think uh, bob's been a very responsible horse tour owner that's the issue today is not that for for me the issue today is we want to make sure we're not adding horse tours and the good thing is is he's reducing it and i think that's what people mm -hmm. feel good about is that he's reducing it so we just if there's a way and i don't know that there is other than you guys decide to do and give it to him we just want to make sure he doesn't change he doesn't open the place back up he's got two and then he's got five that's really going to shoot horse stores in the foot well and, and i can tell you that it can't keep him from doing it you can't keep him from doing it i know that well i mean right now it allows up to five vehicles correct uh, but but as you heard tonight the 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 licenses do not stay with the property so even though the property is designated for a store doesn't mean somebody can come in there and, and start one because they don't have the license correct. so we're limited there the maximum of five, but and, and as we you heard earlier, we're working on to try to get a little control of the maximum amount. But that's just going to take some board time to get that straightened out. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, does anyone else <laughs> have any questions or anything at this time? Uh, I guess. I do have a question yes, for ahead. the <laughs> county attorney. Can we make that in a motion that within the next several months he reduces his horse tours down, which I certainly believe if he says he's going to do it, he'll, he'll do it. I, I don't think that would be appropriate for a use permit. Again, you may uh, uh, apply reasonable conditions uh, to the use of the property that is subject of the applica permit application. Uh, what the discussion has been a lot tonight has to do with a whole, wholly other location that is not relevant to this use permit. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Uh, I guess if not at this time, I'm going to go ahead and close this um, this portion of the uh, the meeting here, and um, I'm going to go ahead and open the floor up for motion. Um, Since, okay, you want it or doesn't matter. Uh, um, I'm, I'm I move to approve PB 13-04. Bob's Wild Horse Tours amended use permit with staff recommendations because the applicant has demonstrated the proposed use meets the use permit review standards of the UDO. The board must include conditions of the approval in motion. Uh, suggested conditions, staff recommendations as follows. An outdoor tour operator license is required per Chapter 8, Article 4 of the Croatia County Code of Ordinances. Outdoor tour operate, operations shall comply with all standards of Chapter 8, Article 4 of the Craytech County Code of Ordinances. A maximum of five passenger, correction, a maximum of five 15 passenger vehicles may be operated for tour, for outdoor tours at any given time. Tour vehicles shall be labeled with decals or paint markings that clearly display the company name in accordance with the license requirements of Chapter 8, Article 4 of the Croatia County Code of Ordinances. 
I'll well. second it. Any comments? Okay, I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, motion carries. Mr. Mr. Chairman, in light of what we've heard tonight, maybe we need to uh, address the various civic associations up there with an email to let them disseminate the information like this out to their membership in the future. I, and I agree. I think um, we need to work on, uh, we can possibly work with our staff on getting a, a more notification out there, something we can work on. Would, that might lead to somebody say, well, I wasn't notified. I, 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 I would, think. I well, we, we can talk to staff and see if there's a better way. If there's not, there's, I mean. Give a lot of thought to that. Be, yeah. Because it, 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 on what what issues and and what areas of the county are going to get notice over and above that required by ordinances and statutes? Because you I mean, have some people that are non-residents. Right, I mean that's something I think we can just talk about. And if there's a good way, not if there's not, then I, I received a lot of phone calls, so so, so somebody knew about it. it I, she has a question, I believe. Two on on the notification. Okay, well, come on, come on up real quick, then. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> they have a website that residents can sign up for and you can select which items that you're that are of interest so when someone files for a permit if you've selected that particular item you will get a notification that says there's a new case out or there's something new to review that kind of takes some of the ownership off the person applying for the permit and puts more of the ownership on the residential folks you provide an email you get an email notification that you can go in and see a new doc that's been presented. That's just a suggestion. It's been super effective for what I do for a business. Just a suggestion. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, yeah. I get, what, 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 make it make it quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. We because okay. you cite you did guys have in there about the stormwater and then about the road service district. And then when I went through it, I actually had to call here and find out because in it was a public notice was highlighted so you could click on the public notice okay. for the stormwater. But then when I went down to the road surface, there was nothing for a public notice. So I called, and Leanne told me, I don't know if it was Leanne or somebody else, they had just stuffed them that day and that the public notices should be going out. So to his point where he said that we couldn't get all these notices for the use permit sent out. We sent okay. out all those notices for the stormwater right. and everything. We'll uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just we'll we'll, uh, we'll talk a little bit to see if we have any better notification. But thank you for that. Okay. It, it, just just a comment. To, that is a requirement in the general statutes it, to for that for the creation of a district. This general statutes require that every property owner in, be affected gets the mailing. That's why that public hearing notice was treated differently than the use permit is. The law tells you different things based on yep. the action in front of the board. All right, thank you. And I'm going to turn this back over to uh, the chairman. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Well. Feel good in that seat, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, I think I'm going to take a, take a brief five-minute recess, let the folks out of here, and I need a drink of water. All right, I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, move on to new business this evening. And we have consideration of a resolution amending county master fee schedule for Mangan Water, Mangan Wastewater, and Southern Outer Bank Systems in accordance with the Kirtuck County Water System Development Fee Study. Who's getting this one tonight? Anyone? Or just I, I, I can speak to that, Mr. Chairman. Um, as the board has been informed and, and the public as well over the course of uh, the last month or so, the North, the, the North Carolina Journal Assembly uh, last year ad adopted uh, new regulations relative to uh, the form of developmental fees or the amount of developmental fees that a county or city may impose uh, on those connecting to its wastewater or water systems. 
Uh, part of that legislation required that uh, counties had to perform a, a system, a, a developmental fee uh, or developmental system fee analysis uh, to determine, uh, prepared by a, a professional engineer or um, someone with, with finance ability uh, to determine what would be the appropriate uh, developmental system fee based upon uh, three different methodologies. Uh, you received uh, that report at a work session that was presented during a public hearing that is also a requirement of that statute. In addition, the, the, fee, the proposed fees and the study were required to be posted for a period of 45 days during which members of the public would be able to make comment uh, regarding those fees and any comments received would be referred to our consultant uh, for, an, for review and comment. We did not receive any uh, comments during that 45-day posting period. Again, you have held the public hearing that was required after it was properly noticed, and now before you tonight is a resolution that puts into effect through our master fee schedule uh, those uh, develop, system development fees for uh, mainland water and wastewater systems uh, as well as the Southern Outer Banks water system. They will be coming to you at a future date, or tonight actually, you'll be, I think it's tonight, or at a future date, you'll be having a public hearing on the Ocean Sands Water and Sewer District. Actually, that is tonight. The, it the, is tonight. The, oh, that's right, the public hearing on the Ocean Sands Water and Sewer District uh, development system fees, or system development fees, and, and uh, you would then thereafter uh, go through this same exercise to adopt those fees following a public hearing. Okay. Thank you. Um, I guess we'll just open the floor for a motion. I move to approve the resolution amending the county master fee schedule for the mainland water, the mainland wastewater, the southern out-of-bank system in accordance with the county, Currituck County Water and Wastewater System Development Fee Study. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, carries unanimously. Next item is a resolution supporting North Carolina House Bill 541 to change the property tax exclusion for solar energy electric systems from 80 to 60 percent and allocate certain proceeds for public education purposes. And does anyone have any discussion on this and questions? No, I'll make a motion to approve the resolution. Okay. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Carries unanimously. Consent agenda, any comments, questions, or concerns? I think I did send a comment that from now on when there's such a large budget amendment that we discuss it a little bit beforehand at all work sessions. I move to approve the consent agenda. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, any opposed? Hearing none, carries unanimously. Dan, we've heard a lot from you tonight. I'm, I'm proud of you. You got anything else to add this uh, evening? No, sir, I don't. Thank you. Okay. Um, can, can I just, I'm going to add something to the county manager there. report real quick. Just, just, just real quick. I got an update from uh, um, DOT um, that uh, I was informed that um, just for the people living in the southern end of the county, <clears throat> that is going to happen. They're going to skim the top surface off, and they're going to be re resurfacing that as soon as they can, but it's, it is on schedule. Uh, are scheduled to uh, to be taken care of just so people don't get any more rock stone up in their windshields. And are, are they replacing windshields if you should? Uh, well, I asked them about that, and they weren't. They weren't too thrilled about yeah, that. Yeah, they weren't too thrilled yeah. about that. They just said, "Don't don't drive too close." Can we add one more thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't drive too close. Can we add um, one more thing to the county manager's report too? That they are doing the final phase of the because you've seen lots and I've heard lots of complaints about the the roads how they're going to they have to do the second part of that so they're not finished with what's been done so far on the roads uh, that is correct as they reported to us the this is the milling and the first layer of asphalt is is down now they're going to come back and put a, a rough course over top of that and then there's actually a third phase where they'll come back and cut in the rubble strips uh, and the reflector so there's actually two more phases uh, that have to get done. Uh, it is supposed to be by contract done before either May 31st or June 30th. Um, if it goes into May, then the contractor will be prohibited from working on Fridays as the traffic comes up. But uh, there's at least two more sets of, of uh, before that project is completed. Yeah, they've got a bad spot right there around the Sandy Chapel. I don't know what they did. 
good. There's a couple of places where water's standing and also dip downs mm -hmm. driving on it. Mm -hmm. Go get them, Miss Kitty. Anything um, else in Calabash? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say that I spoke to uh, to your point uh, on the last agenda item. <coughs> Had a little bit of a brief conversation with Ben. I just happened to walk in and saw the email. So there's a couple different ways we can handle that. And um, I think maybe just get with him and see what you want to do. Since he'll be around here in two months and Dan won't be. <laughs> All right. Uh, we need a motion for adjournment. I'll make it. So we got, we got a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right. This time I'll open the special meeting of the Ocean Sands Water and Sewer District Board. Uh, first item on the agenda is a public hearing, development fee analysis, and rate structure for the Ocean Sands Water and Sewer District. I saw Eric up here. Eric, you yeah, he's, he's you're in the light light. up here. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Next slide. Good evening, commissioners. Good evening. Staff. Well, <laughs> my name's Eric Weatherly. I'm county engineer. And um, all right, which button was this? Next slide. I'll point then. So um, you did have a public hearing on April 1st for the developmental fees where Raftillis came in and did a presentation that went over the analysis that we performed for these developmental fees. But uh, tonight we wanted to do it on behalf of the Ocean Sands Water and Sewer District. So you're acting as that district. And uh, what I'll do is recap what Raptilis went over and then uh, if there are any public comments. <clears throat> so this is the recap. The developmental fees. <laughs> developmental fees are what we used to call impact fees. So now the state says that uh, you have to call them developmental fees, and their definition is it's a one-time charge assessed against new development as a way to pay for facilities needed to support growth or to recoup cost of existing facilities. Uh, all this was, was uh, based on a state house bill 436 that was an act to provide for uniform authority to implement system development fees for public water and sewer in North Carolina. So the process you had to go through, you had to calculate the system development fees through an analysis. We hired a consultant. Uh, they had, we uh, had to post it and solicit comments for 45 days. We received no comments. Um, and now we're having the public hearings. So to calculate system development fees, uh, you had to determine which industry standard to use. You had to figure out what the costs of the facilities were. Then you had to figure out what the cost per, what, how, many, how much usage was an average user, and then mu multiply that by the cost of the facilities. And you come up with the development fee. So these were the results. This is for water. The, um, the bottom line is your existing fees. And the one above that <clears throat> is what you can charge. That's the maximum you can charge up to. So tonight you adopted the mainland. Um, you have you can you can wait on ocean sands or you can do that with your budget analysis. Uh, the next one is for water. Oh, this is sewer. Uh, sewer. You can see again the bottom one is existing. The line above it is what you could charge for your system development fees. This table, the first line is your standard meter for residential. Uh, the 5H, some people call it 5H, is three quarter inch meter, which is a residential meter. Above that, you can charge these fees for larger meters. That's the presentation. If there's any comments or questions. Seems like we went up quite substantially on some of this stuff. 
four fifty. <coughs> existing fee four hundred fifty, and the calc we're going to charge now is fifty nine twenty four. You can charge up to that amount. Okay, so we're just staying okay. Up to. Up to. Okay. <coughs> That's the calculated rate that you can be charging. Is that based on actual cost? Yes, sir. That's the actual cost of those facilities out there. Well, Ocean Sands is not going to be happy in phase three, four, five. Uh, understandably, but but it, the the intent is to in in, in Kurtzak, we hear this quite often is is developing a strategy whereby development pays its way. Sure, and that's exactly what the intent of this analysis is is for to calculate what is that financial cost that the developer should pay per unit to support his demand on the utility that's in place, and so. We have um, something to show them now. And we, and, and there, the there is a report and analysis behind how it was calculated, and, and uh, as the process requires, it's been out there for, uh, well, it's been out there way longer than 45 days for, for someone to question, comment uh, about the, the, uh, uh, the methodology, and to date we've, had, we've heard nothing. nothing. Uh, now, it does not, need, does not mean that you need to, you can assess all the way up to that fee, uh, but keep in mind, anything short of that fee, you, in essence, are subsidizing back towards the individual, the existing customer to uh, the mm -hmm. detriment of the actual developer. Because you're going to raise water rates to cover. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, there's a certain Somebody's fee you pay. have to raise to cover your expenses one way or the other, yes. Well, and it, it's, it seems to me that a lot of this stuff is very similar to what it would cost you to put a well and septic in by the time you pay a, a fresh Go back and sewer. <clears throat> Same with water. You can see where Ocean Sands Water and Sewer District is now versus proposed or up to. Yeah, it's pretty low. And, it, and the main ones, yeah. the main ones up quite a bit more than the existing fees here, right? What they're in the four, they're in the five thousand, four five thousand. Mainland is the last column. Okay. Uh, it's, it actually went down from five thousand to forty two seventy nine. Okay. The, the the other reason that I believe Ocean Sands you're seeing such a significant. <clears throat> Uh, potential increase is uh, ocean sands wastewater is the well, one of the only utilities that the remaining development potential that exists within its service district there isn't existing capacity to serve that potential and although we're finishing a uh, an upgrade or an expansion of the plant it will need to get expanded again to be able to handle uh, this large undeveloped lots and therefore you're looking at today's cost pretty significant cost to add additional capacity into the system uh, which is one reason why you're seeing uh, that higher than say like uh, the, the mainland water systems where the capacity exists and people are buying into the system mm. uh, and, and this fee here you're, you're talking about having to look at the next expansion of ocean sands to accommodate uh, the development of the large undeveloped tracks that exist. So, when we when that expansion needs to occur, is that going to happen at the same place as the existing? We're we're going to dismantle the old portions of it, are we not? But we're dismantling the the old plant will be taken down as part of this <coughs> process. So, right. uh, any day now, uh, right. the new plant should be taking flows on. Um, when the plant becomes operational and is, is where it needs to be under the current contract, they will remove the existing or the, the original plant will be taken out. There is a, a degree of speculation on how to move forward with the, the unapproved land because you really don't know at this time what the developmental potential is or how they develop it out. But based on what we have put together in our engineering analysis, um, the next expansion could be handled at the current location, treatment and exposure uh, and, and disposal, um, depending how the unapproved lands develop out, there is the potential that uh, we will have to look at more creative solutions for disposal. The treatment could handle uh, on site, but disposal could get uh, more challenging as you go forward. Okay, thank you. You're basically, our engineering projections is doubling what's out there now, going from 600,000 gallons to 1.2 million gallons. Mm. And so the treatment, there is, there's land for 1.2 treatment, may or may not be disposal for 1.2 million. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Can I ask a question, please? Of course. I know um, 
in the past when we talked about the Mid-County Bridge, we talked about the capability maybe of a water line being attached to that bridge. What about the possibility of a disposal line to bring it over on the mainland somewhere? Have we put that forward in terms of just a request? Um, well, it might be easier to answer the, the, the other question. Uh, Currituck County had made a request in the design of the bridge to design it in such a fashion that utilities could be um, hung on the bridge to help integrate the main and the outer banks. Um, to my knowledge, they have turned that request down because of the additional expenses it would add on the project. So as of right now, I do not believe it's being designed uh, to allow us to carry any utilities. We've talked about uh, not only potable water, um, but even potentially the, uh, the salt brine discharge off the plant. Um, we haven't actually talked about septic. I, I imagine that could be cost prohibitive compared to options you have there. But as of right now, it's, it's my understanding that we are not, there, there is no capability of hanging pipe or utilities on the bridge. Well, it's going to be cost prohibitive. It's very large cost and compared to the size of the user base. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anything further? Okay. Um, don't have anyone signed up for public comments this evening. Don't see anybody out there that maybe want to speak. Lori, you good? Okay. Uh, All right. <laughs> By this time, then I will uh, I will close public comments and uh, open the floor for a motion. Well, you, you have nothing tonight. Tonight was just oh, a public hearing. Just, okay. At, at your next meeting, uh, just like you just got finished doing, we will be bringing you an ordinance to adopt uh, uh, the fees for Ocean Sands. Okay. Thank you. All right, next agenda item. Um, this bud well, well, in, inside Ocean Sands, as you're sitting as the Ocean Sands Water and Sewer District Board, uh, you do have a budget amendment that we're asking tonight for your consideration. You have just one. Uh, it is in your agenda package, um, and it is to reallocate monies around within the department. Um, as we are getting closer and closer to the end of the fiscal year, uh, you're, you're starting to see the departments needing to move money around to match their uh, their line items to what their actual expenses are, and, and that's what this is, is you're seeing allocations within the uh, uh, the operations itself, just moving some money around. Uh, but I'll be happy to answer any specific questions you might have on this one. Any I'll questions? make a motion to approve that Sorry. amendment. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none. Carries unanimously. Now, Ms. Kitty. Motion to adjourn the patient staff water and sewer district board Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. With that, I will open the special meeting of the Tourism Development Authority, and we have Tourism Development Budget Amendments as an agenda item this evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You actually have several of these, and I'll take them uh, hopefully in the order that you have in your agenda package. Uh, the first one is uh, we received the insurance premiums for the artifacts that are included in the historic house. The premium is higher than what we had originally budgeted for, so it's a budget amendment to provide additional funds uh, to provide that insurance coverage. Uh, the next one is uh, when we completed the NC-12 beautification plan, the, the tree planting, basically, um, in the original installation was uh, maintenance for a year. Um, that is now up, and so there, what we're asking is the budget money to requesting money to budget to get us from maintenance from now to June 30th, we're in this contract will be rolled into our other landscaping contracts on the Outer Banks. Uh, so that's three months of uh, uh, maintaining the, uh, the trees that we're playing along in C12. Uh, the next one is to move money into capital outlay. Uh, you see there's, there's three items uh, mentioned there. Uh, during the budget process, we were able to buy a, uh, a stage um, we do have some licensing fees that has to be paid with that to DMV, uh, so we're requesting the funds for that. Uh, the staff on the, on the grounds uses communications, walkie-talkie communications, and they're asking to, uh, to purchase some more uh, walkie-talkies before the season starts. And the last one is to commission uh, a painting just like the success of the, uh, the painting for this, uh, this building is to have a fundraising effort to have a, a painting, a rendering done of the Jarsburg Colored School. The next budget amendment is uh, we are having problems with Nutria um, at the, uh, um, the historic site, and so this is to have a contractor come in and help address uh, that issue. Uh, 
You might as well move in. There's a bunch of them. <laughs> I believe. Mean, they're mean. <laughs> I believe that is uh, all. All the budget members in the package, and I'll be we happy. Have one, to one question on the uh, maintenance for the uh, trees. Was there money included for? I don't. I, I can't pull it up for the. Um, to take care of the mowing and stuff along there. I know there was a shortfall. Was there not on that? <coughs> that contract was kind of wrapped together, was it not? It is included in this. Okay. Just want to make yes. sure. Thank you. Well, then I will move to approve the uh, TDA budget amendments. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Hearing none. And I will accept the motion to adjourn. So moved. Do we have a second? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all for an exciting evening.